2NURFM 103.7 as we uh, take a look now at some of the things happening in the world of education. We do that with our Professor of Education from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti. As always, made a pleasure to have you here. And if for no other reason, we always get to look through uh, different movies that we've uh, That's both right. <laughs> looked at and we've decided there's, there's not much out at the moment. So no. we, we actually went straight into the topic, didn't we? Yeah, we spent our Saturdays in the dark, don't we? <laughs> That's it's about it. Look, we are having a look at some of the numbers, though, in, in terms of uh, writing uh, and and that'll also bleed into some other numbers in terms of uh, where students are up to at the moment. So where is the data leading us, John? Well, Mark, one of the uh, indicators that came out last week, and since we've been on air with you, is related to the NAPLAN writing scores. As you know, NAPLAN is the national test of basic literacy, numeracy, and writing done at years three, five, seven, and nine. And the scores in the writing were the ones that were a little disappointing, uh, except in spelling, which did go up which is contrary to what we're about to talk about. A little concern about whether we're emphasizing writing enough, whether teachers are equipped to do that, or whether we're uh, really up to speed with what we need to do to get kids fluent in their writing skills. All right. So uh, it's gone down a little bit. Um, What are we putting that down to? There's obviously a whole bunch of reasons that that could be. Yeah. First of all, it's not good news when anything goes down. Mm. There are some reasons why it might have. Generally, we're not spending as much time on writing to be honest with you, because of the focus on literacy and numeracy in three and five and seven in particular, the teachers are spending less time in more creative and more time-consuming kinds of curriculum. And to do writing, just like in reading, if you want to be a better reader, you got to read more. That makes sense. If you do want to do more writing, you got to write more. you got to get a lot of feedback. And that feedback takes a lot of time to give feedback. And so there's much more we can do if we wanted to spend more time on writing. Some of it's the type of writing. So the prompts that they give, and this is sort of a year seven prompt, is should animals be kept in cages? Go. You got the time limit starts now. You're going a five paragraph essay where you have to have a thesis. Remember that from back (laughs) in the day? Um, You have three examples and then Mm. a conclusion. But what if that prompt doesn't interest you? Or what if the prompt is contextually not in your area where you've even known anything about it Mm. to write and you get frozen? The other is that during this transition of the last several years they're comparing to, we've moved to where except for year three, the tests are online. And I don't know if you've ever taken one. I haven't done an online timed exam uh, where it was, you know, really important. I think it's pretty safe to say that um, education was uh, in the rearview mirror for me and and definitely you, John, by the time (laughs) that uh, online examinations became very much a thing. So still very much... You know, the paper, you flip it over to the next page and you know, so fill in away. The several go. percentage points that we might be down in writing could be explained by students. It's almost more of a typing test. If you, what if you didn't get finished because you're not a typist in year five or seven, even though kids are versatile with their thumbs and the mm. texting, they may not be there in that writing. So I'm not trying to make excuses. We probably got to do better. Just put, make the screens uh, in the shape of a phone. <laughs> you just type yeah, them. Make, or you a, know, a voice a, activated a, exactly. test. But If you can see in some schools, there's clunky technology, some of the systems weren't perfect. And so some of that down could actually be explained by some of these others. I think in the end, what we've got to do is to count genuine, authentic prompts that students want to write about. Has to have an authentic audience, because if you're just writing for the computer, nobody really cares. And then maybe some different kinds of writing. They test writing in imaginative, informative, and persuasive. But imaginative actually isn't where we're testing. And that's where we might get more student motivation to get really creative. Harder to mark that, though, Mm. because how do you mark creativity and imagination? So in this signaling, spelling going uh, better Mm. would be a signal that maybe there's not all is lost uh, in the uh, reality of what's going on in the literacy areas in schools. That's that's a good question, and it's probably a whole other thing in itself, John, if we can sort of peer behind to where the the markers are here. How do you... Um, in your own analytical brain, mark for something like that. Yeah. Because if it's simply a, a test where there is a right and a wrong, that's dead easy. But how do you look at someone's work over four or five paragraphs, let's say, and go, that's really that really ticks the boxes that I'm looking for? Because every single response will be different. Well, persuasive essay, there's general rubrics, we call it. Those are the indicators we use to mark. Generally, do you have a clear thesis? Have you given three specific examples? And do you have a logical conclusion? And regardless of what you've written, as long as Mm. it's legal, uh, would be a good Mm. essay. So it's less about the specifics of the content than the structure and the form of how you've written it. So that's what markers are looking for. But when it gets more in-depth and you're looking for imagination or creativity or your own personal view, 
that gets into very subjective marking and then you don't have consistency and that leads to all sorts of problems in that you could mark something different than I mark it. So well, generally we're yeah. making it easy to mark that may not be better writing. That's a, and again, what's the which is uh, that this is a whole thing, isn't it? Because I, I like your other point on well, if we're looking for if it's just got three examples, if it's logical, whatever. In a way, there is still a yes or no, right yeah, or wrong. Right. Uh, but it's in that other area. We how do you get down into the weeds and decide? Because if somebody has been really creative and gone off on this way, and if I'm not subjective enough because I my views on a topic might be somewhere different or or whatever. Um, two different markers with their own brain and their own set of eyeballs may very well mark very differently. And for a student perspective, if you write about what you're passionate about, it's going to be much deeper and much more persuasive or understanding uh, deep knowledge than if you're writing on somebody who's telling you what your prompt is. And, but then that means there's not consistency. So in all these things about standardization, do we really get the results we're looking for? Generally, the results aren't too bad. The down may be explainable away. Generally, what we've got to do is get students doing more authentic writing. Mm -hmm. Writing is such a great cognitive developer. Great writers are also great thinkers. And so getting students to be literate involves reading and writing. But if you're not reading, you're also not a very good writer because you have to give examples. And most of the examples, just as you all are very literate in the music area here with the songs you play and the song list and the, the facts you have, that comes from listening to a lot of music. But it also comes then from reading a lot about it. We have to get kids reading more in order to be better writers. Maybe we're not letting them read because we're doing too much on those little boxes that we have. Uh, maybe, maybe. See prior episodes. <laughs> All right. So if uh, I if I uh, do, do really bad in a maths test, that's because I'm I haven't studied up. If I'm if I stuff up in creative writing, that's because they marked it differently. Or you haven't been reading enough to have good examples. <laughs> Depends. There he is, our professor Thanks, of education, John Fischetti, uh, a bit to cover there this morning. Right here with us at 2 RFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.